Hi everyone, we're live again today. It's Tuesday, uh, May 21st. Oh my God, May is almost over. I can't believe it. We are uh, embarking on a new week. For those of you who have just joined Catch Your Breath, I want to welcome you and thank you for following me. It is the biggest um, a sense of flattery that I get when I see people following me. Hello, Susan. Hi, Candace. Hi, Dawn. Thank you for following us today. Hi, Sandra. Um, so my name is Barbara Moore, and I was diagnosed with COPD in 2015. Shortly thereafter, I had a major exacerbation. Um, I had a sudden cardiac arrest, and I ended up in ICU for a little while. And um, that was a month-long journey. And um, my family and my friends saw me through. I was very, very lucky to have support throughout my whole um, uh, journey with uh, my first exacerbation, which was totally, totally scary. So um, uh, most of you have contacted me over the weekend. I had a big uh, blitz on an article that was done in Guidepost magazine, and it is called In the Moment. And if anybody would like to read that story, it is on my blog right now, and you can access it through Catch Your Breath 60, and you can read all about what happened to me and how uh, I got from there to here in a short three years. Hi, Don. Um, so I am, um, Bar my name is Barbara Moore, and I am a COPD advocate, and I'm hoping to build a community here where we can support people not only with COPD, but with other chronic illnesses as well. So my page is blowing up and I have over 425 followers now. And so um, I had a request over the weekend to talk today about showering, bathing, personal hygiene and all that jazz. So I thought um, uh, it was a great subject to embark upon, especially with um, uh, summer coming and uh, we tend to do more showering and bathing and so forth in the summer so um, it does it does um, get to be kind of a um, one of the hardest tasks I always said that we do and one of the the uh, ways that I realized that there was something wrong with me was a couple of years ago and a little bit before my diagnosis hi Elaine um, that I realized that um, uh, I couldn't actually stand in the shower and I couldn't I, I was confused about this I didn't know why I didn't understand the reasons why of course I hadn't been diagnosed with COPD yet and um, I couldn't stand in the shower and I I uh, would take a stool into the shower with me and but it was very odd that you know to take a sh hi Jeff uh, very odd that you would take a, sh a stool into the shower with you and my daughter kept saying to me what is that stool in the shower for? I don't get it. But it was my big secret, so I was keeping it a secret. So one of the first things that I found out when I started to exhibit uh, symptoms of COPD was that showering was a very, very, very hard thing to do. And uh, I think most of us who have COPD probably know that by now. And whether you're on oxygen or not, it really doesn't make any difference because it is a tough thing to do. So I did a blog post about this many years ago, and I did a... I have a video on YouTube on uh, showering where I went through my bathroom and showed you what I do. I'll save you the um, the curiosity. There's no nude pictures in there. <laughs> I want to save everybody the uh, horror of having to see that. But uh, I did not have nude pictures in there. But I did have um, the process of getting in and out of the shower. So um, first of all, I'm going to ask you, does anybody have any really good tips and tricks uh, for getting in and out of the shower and uh, how that's done? Because we do have um, a huge problem with it. Good morning, Judy. In southern Ontario, it's afternoon, it's three o'clock, but good morning to you. I don't know where you are, probably someplace else. Hi, Wendy. So... <clears throat> The first thing that I do when I'm getting ready for a shower is I actually get ready for it. Um, uh, hand grips are a fabulous idea, Carol. One of the best ideas that you can have is hand grips. And hand grips can be hardwired, by that I mean uh, put into the uh, joist. But if you're renting 
or you're in a home that you're not sure you're going to stay in. Some of these new suction cup hand grips, they say, are pretty good. I've never tried them. Mine are hardwired, and I had somebody do them for us um, just so that there would be no question of uh, stability. But they tell me that these new ones that you can get, you just put them in and you click it, and uh, it suctions to the wall. And I can't tell you how. Oh, it's 5 a.m. in Australia. Thank you for joining us. Why are you up so early? It's the middle of the night. Um, when it, so these, um, these new hand grips, they just suction onto the wall and you can take them off and you can move them. And it's a pretty good idea, right? Take them off and move them wherever you want to. And the other, the other thing with that is that if I move, I'll have to have hand grips put onto uh, my new bathroom, right? Because I really do use them. So I use one in front of me and I use one at the side of me. So in that way, I can really... Um, uh, yeah, mine are into the studs too, Carol, but if you're not, if you're not um, uh, owning the place that you live in, it might be best to, um, it might be best to, to get the uh, suction cup ones, right? So that you're not like, uh, you're not um, defacing their property. And then if you don't, if you don't own the place and you don't live there, or you don't, you're going to move someplace, you can always take them with you. So they're a little bit portable, right? So I have one in front of me in the shower, one beside me in the shower, and I also have one beside my toilet. So uh, grab bars are a fabulous idea. Anybody else got any ideas on... Uh, um... Yeah, I don't know why either, Carol. It just happens. It happened to me on the weekend. I was, I was uh, uh, writing some stuff and everything was doubling and tripling. It was annoying, very annoying. Um, so... Wendy says, I keep a stool in the shower as well as a chair beside my shower so that I can sit while I shower and then move straight into the chair after. I shower very slowly and keep the back edge of the curtain open to allow for the steam out. That's an excellent, excellent point. Um, we have to make sure when we're showering that we leave a little bit of a, a crack in the window if we have a window in our bathroom. Now, not all bathrooms have windows. Uh, leaving the door open a little bit is really, really good. And um, putting the fan on if you have it to circulate the air. We need to have cool air. Um, you know, an old methodology used to be that if a child was suffering from asthma and they couldn't breathe, you would take them into a steamy uh, bathroom, put the shower on hot and let the steam, let them suck in the steam. But actually, that's not a really good idea because the steam is full of uh, humidity, right? So, uh, Windy... Wendy also says, I didn't have, uh, I use a towel, to, uh, I get my hair wrapped and I, I use, so I don't do anything but put it up and slip into a rope. That's an excellent idea. Excellent ideas, Wendy. Just as I struggle, I struggle until the RT for my oxygen company told me that I can wear, yeah, who wears oxygen in the shower? Of course you can wear oxygen in the shower. In fact, showering is exertion. And so if you're in the shower, you actually could turn it up a little bit, right, while you're in there. Because as Noah said before, uh, on one of his, um, one of his uh, uh, videotapes, he said, you know, really, we're so concerned about how much oxygen we're getting. But in fact, we are getting very, very little of it because it's kind of going all over the place, right? So one of the things, and if you don't like to use the cannulas in your nose, some people are really worried about the cannulas in their nose and whether the water's going to go up. The cannulas, it actually doesn't happen, but you could uh, turn to a mask and that would actually help too because really your face is easier to wash after, right? So if you're not feeling good about having the cannulas in your nose, you can actually uh, move to a mask and that gives you more of the oxygen. But don't be afraid to wear your oxygen in the shower. Definitely wear your oxygen and turn it up a little bit too, right? I flipped the toilet seat down, says Carol. I absolutely flipped the toilet seat down too. And as you'll see in my video, uh, I sit on top of the toilet seat and I do all of my dressing there. So I have a stool beside my toilet where I have all of the clothes that are waiting. So <clears throat> getting ready to go to a doctor's appointment or something, we always like to have a shower and feel nice and fresh before we go. But the shower doesn't have to be that day. So you can shower the day before and... Um, uh, you can uh, shower the night before and be ready to go to the doctor's appointment the next day. So it doesn't have to all be done in one day. Because often showering is 
um, enough in, for one day, right? So the grab bars is a great idea and getting ready for um, the shower, you're going to look for, um, oh, you have a flip down seat in the, in the shower. That's an excellent idea. So a flip down seat in the shower, it's not the toilet seat you're talking about. You're talking about a flip down seat. So that would be the equivalent of having a shower stool or a chair. It doesn't have to be a chair. I don't normally use the back of my chair. I just like to have it there, right? Um, and having a stool or a chair in the in the bathtub is really is an excellent idea. One thing that I will tell you about though is warm that chair up before you get in there because that plastic's damn cold when you sit down on it. On it. Um, so that's a very good idea. I've never actually seen one of those, Carol, but um, a very very good idea is that uh, you shower. You have a, a shower seat that is attached to the wall, and I would imagine, Carol, that this is also. Um, uh, into the stud so that it's nice and uh, firm. Um, my stool has, my chair has uh, legs. Um, warm the seat up before you sit on it because it can be damn cold <laughs> with, when you've got, um, uh, when you're putting your bare bum on there. And the other thing that I do is when I'm sitting in the shower, I put the plug in so that as I'm showering, um, the water's actually filling up and it fills up to about my ankles. So this lets my um, my feet soak a little bit uh, and it makes it easier to cut my nails after right and to uh, get all kind of the dead skin off of my feet and it really helps we need to take care of our feet one of the things that we need to do as we get older is to take care of our feet I don't know if you if everybody's aware of that or not but as we lose circulation in our feet or as uh, circulation is a bit diminished right um, it's always a good idea to make sure that you have no sores on your feet, no extra skin. Make sure that you rub them and, and get all of the extra skin off with a, with a dry towel. Um, watch your cuticles. Make sure that your nails are not cut too short and don't let them get ingrown. I also, Jeff, shower in the, um, in the early afternoon when I am the strongest and before I've, I've lost all of my energy for the day. Um, whether it's before or after exercise doesn't really matter to me, um, but it's when I feel the strongest in the day. And it's a funny thing when I'm uh, thinking about having a shower, you know, sometimes I have to really talk myself into it. I have to really get kind of, you know, inching a little bit at a time. So the first thing that I'll do is get my clothes ready for when I come out of the shower. And then the next thing is I'll get my robe ready for when I exit the shower. I have a stool beside my shower that I can jump into. I have a caddy that I can just take from the, um, under the um, uh, cupboard and into the shower so that I have all of my shampoos, my body wash, um, my conditioner, uh, a good, a conditioner with a shampoo and a conditioner together is a really good idea because that allows you to just do it, do it once. Has anybody noticed that Raising your hands over your head is a really, really hard task for us. And that, uh, especially in the winter, not so much in the summer, but you know, my um, symptoms are always exacerbated in the winter. Armor size exercises. Now, Carol, you are on Noah Greenspan's um, ultimate uh, online uh Thing. And that's what you're, is that what you're talking about? The armor size exercises that tremendously help for strength in the shower. Um, you don't even realize how, how hard it is, but raising your hands over your heads um, can really, really uh, diminish your breathing immediately. So sometimes if you're in a really, if you're really not feeling well and you really don't have a lot of energy, Try and call your partner to come and help you uh, do your hair just to, to put it on. And that's the other reason why I say a two-in-one is a really good, um, a really good product because you, you only have to do it once, right? So Wendy says there's a product called Baby Feet on Amazon that's amazing. You put it on two for an hour or two and then over the next few weeks all of the dead skin on your feet comes away. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Um, I've never taken good care of my feet until recently, but now I do. Yeah, exfoliation, that's what I was trying to say. Yes, I was trying to say. So Carol says, yes, the armor size is from Noah's uh, video. 
and um, yeah, you can get it from his regular group. You don't have to go on um, the online, but if anybody is on Noah's online, it's great. Um, uh, and there's also tons and tons and tons of videos on uh, YouTube on it, right? So we're getting ready to go for a shower. We're, we're uh, uh, putting some forethought into what's going to be needed when we come out of the shower. Uh, what are we going to need when we're in there and making sure that we have everything because the last thing that you want to do once you're in the shower is have to come out and get a washcloth or have to come out and get the shampoo and uh, conditioner. So um, in our shower caddy, we have everything that we're going to need, right? So it's all there. You just have to pick it up in one swipe and put it right on the side of the uh, uh, bathtub. We're using a shower stool and we're uh, warming up the shower stool because it's really, really hard plastic. And so it needs a little bit of warmth before you put your butt on it. Okay, and um, when we're talking about the shower caddy, we're talking about our shampoos and our, um, our uh, body washes and stuff like that. If you use pump bottles, and you can usually get them at the dollar store, they're not very expensive, and they're not very, they're not huge bottles, but it, pump bottles are often nice in the, uh, in the uh, bathtub, and make sure that they're plastic, because you know the glass ones will break. Um, if you do use a stool, it's a great time to uh, shave your legs. Now, shaving my legs is not... Um, something that I normally do throughout the winter, but I definitely do throughout the summer. And yes, Carol, keeping your phone handy beside you uh, in the shower is always a necessity. If you need something, and I always tell, I always tell whoever's here in the house, right? Because I'm rarely by myself. And so I always tell everybody who's here in the house, you know, I'm going for a shower now. So if I scream for you, you've got to come for me, right? Um, and... Uh, um, Always make sure that you have enough, uh, you know, that your phone's uh, charged, right? Um, so I put the plug in the water. Now, does anybody take scents into the uh, shower with them? Some people like to have um, some Epsom salts. I don't normally bath. Does anybody bath, by the way? Does anybody take a bath? I tried it once. I tried it once in the last couple of years. What? Carol, benefit. Nice. Hair on her legs doesn't grow. Can you imagine since her, um, since her coma? Carol says, since my coma, the hair on my legs doesn't grow. Bonus. Uh, if there's one good thing that can come out of it, that can come out of it. Um, so I don't, I don't take a bath. I tried a bath one time a couple, about a year ago and I had a hell of a time getting out of the bathtub. So I said, that's it, not doing that anymore. And, uh, so I don't do that, but, um, um, does anybody use any scents? You know, some people like Epsom salt, some people like lavender, some people, you have to be careful with it. With a jetted tub, right? Oh, my sister-in-law has a jetted tub. I'm so jealous. I... I, we used to have a spa and uh, really, really hot too. We kept it really, really hot and I absolutely loved it. But now you got to be careful if you're in the bathtub, right? Um, if you have high blood pressure, you have to be careful. I can't tolerate any scents. I, I really have a hard time with scents. But sometimes I like a little peppermint, um, a little bit of uh, lavender, that sort of thing. But I have a hard time with scents that kind of get in my, in my throat. And I, I was reading some stuff preparing for today's um, uh, tea time. And uh, a lot of people were saying, you know, that they like scents. Not for us, though, I don't think with, um, with lung problems. I think it's too much for us with lung problems. Uh, but if you can, it's always nice. It's always nice to have smelly in the bathroom, right? Of course, we can't use scented candles or anything like that either. Um, some of those, it, it's not only the, um, it, you shouldn't be using uh, live candles with your oxygen, uh, but the scents are just a little bit too heavy for our lungs, right? So I really don't use that, but some people like lavender and lemon and um, Epsom salts is really nice if you put it in your, um, if you do the uh, plug in the sh in while well, you're showering and you let it uh, go on your feet, the Epsom salts is really nice, but that's about as much as I do there. Um, 
so we talked about the stool. Another thing um, that Wendy mentioned was uh, um, oh, thank you, Wendy. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know, when I was teaching, um, the students used to always say to me when I wore a blue top, oh my God, your, your eyes just pop out. And uh, I used to say, oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So a funny story about my blue top. When I had my first sudden cardiac arrest, I was wearing a blue top. And the doctors cut it off of me, or the medical medics, whatever, cut it off of me. And I was, I was kind of pissed off, right? Because, you, you know, you, you wake up, you go, huh, they cut my clothes off of me. The second time it happened, the same thing happened. I was wearing another blue top, and the same thing happened, and they cut it off of me. The third time it happened, guess what? I was wearing a blue top, and they cut it off of me. So I don't have any blue tops left anymore. This is about it, right? So, um, yeah, funny thing about the, the blue tops, but uh, thank you, Wendy. So I have another um, uh, stool. that uh, It's a very lightweight stool, and it sits beside my uh, bath, my toilet, most of the time, and it holds my clothes when I'm getting dressed in the morning. But when I go into the shower, I put it beside my bathtub so I can step right out of the bathtub and sit on the, on the stool. So if you look at my video, you're going to see it. You're going to see this very lightweight stool. And I got to tell you that if you look at that stool, that stool is about 50 years old. And I think I bought it at Wolco, if anybody remembers Wolco. And I paid $17.99 for it when I bought it. It was way before I was married. So yeah, putting a cloth over the seat is great if you want to do that, right? Um, and you're so lucky if you have health care, if you have health care and you have somebody coming into your home to help you, use it as a, use the showering, you know, as a tool because uh, um, really everybody really does kind of need some help in the shower, right? And as we get along and we start progressing, um, oh, really, Candace, um, everybody's progressing and everybody's disease is progressing and um, the showering thing is not going to get easier, right? It's just going to get harder as we go. So use the tools that you have. Having a handheld uh, shower head is a really good idea. And the reason why I like a handheld shower head is because I don't like the water coming on my head. And I think that that's, I think that that's kind of part and parcel with uh, Wilco. Yes, Wendy, Wilco. That's how long ago it was. Um, I think the, uh, I don't like the water on my head and I think that's part and parcel with not being able to catch your breath and uh, I feel like I'm drowning if the water's coming on my head. So if I have a handheld um, shower head, I'm able more, I'm more able to control the water and everything that's going on around me. So I really, really like that. And I think most of us have handheld um, shower heads, at least I would hope so. And if you don't have them, they're under $100 and you can get some really good ones. And they have different um, uh, pressure on the water in that, right? It's really cool. I know that Amazon sells them, right? So, um, yes, leave your door open and leave your window open a crack. If you don't have a window... You definitely have a fan in there, so turn on the fan and get the air circulating, right? You've got to get the, uh, the humid, uh, moist air out and get some uh, clean stuff in, right? So we talked about a terry robe. Carol, I love a terry robe. You know, they're not easy to get these days, these terry towel robes, and they're, they're pretty pricey. I thought anyways, like uh, the one that I got, now I know we, we, pay, we pay more for everything that we buy up here in Canada. I don't know why that is. I guess it's the, because most of the stuff is manufactured in the States and it has to be um, brought across the border and so you have to pay that and then they have to pay freight and all of that, right? So I get that. Um, but most of what we buy here in Canada is so expensive. So when I went to look for a terry towel robe, first of all, I had a really hard time finding one. The reason why I had a really hard time finding one is because they're so damn pricey here. So I paid about $175 for my terry towel robe. It's worth every cent of it. I absolutely love it. When I get out of the, um, yeah, see, your average is 50 to 75. 
And uh, now, oh, one thing I didn't mention when I'm talking about price of, of uh, terry towel robes is that I take a bigger size. So that might, you know, some people might be um, maybe not as large as I am, right? But I take an extra large. So um, and I, anything that's over large here in Canada, we also pay extra for that too. And we don't have um, large lady shops in Canada like you have in the States. We used to, when, when we were first, we first started working, when I first started working, um, like outside of the home, and I started working in an office, first place you head is over to the States because you've got so many large lady shops. Sharps, shops for larger ladies, put it that way. So um, getting a terry towel robe here is not easy. Uh, I had to search and search for one and I finally found one. It was at the bay and everybody knows you pay through the nose at the bay. But anyways, I love it. I love the, the robe. I never regretted buying it. Um, what I did regret was buying the cheap one um, uh, it, in the first place because it now is in the garbage. And uh, I finally bought my terry towel one and I, I won't part with it. The only problem with the terry towel robe was that I bought a white one. So when I shower and I, you know, I have my, my hair's colored. So when I get out of the shower, my hair is dripping a bit and some of the hair dye dripped on the back of it. So that kind of bugs me a little bit, right? Um, yes, very big and comfy. That's what I like, very big and comfy. So anyways, I bought my robe and I never looked back. And uh, if you have long hair, a micro size, um, a micro fiber towels are really good for your hair because they soak up all the, all the water right away, right? Is anybody afraid of using their oxygen in the shower? Oh, there's the duo. One second. One second. I have dueling dogs going on in the backyard. Yes, neighbor's dogs. Yeah. Uh, extra large is fabulous, right? Because you want to wrap it right around you. That's what you want to do. And the whole idea of the terry towel robe is that you don't need a towel, right? So that's perfect. It just works great. Um, so nobody has any problems wearing O2 uh, oxygen in the shower, right? Definitely wear your oxygen in the shower. If you don't believe me, ask your doctor and he'll tell you the same thing. And I think he'll tell you to kind of turn it up a little bit too. The thing about having a shower is that you have to practice mindfulness and meditation. You have to calm yourself before you get into the shower and work yourself up to, you know, how nice it's going to be when you get out of the shower and how fresh you're going to feel and how nice you're going to smell. Um, because you have to talk yourself into having a shower and doing it mindfully without getting, um, without getting, uh, yourself into a tizzy or, or any anxiety. You can't have anxiety when you're dealing with water and stuff like that, right? So when I get out of the shower, I uh, usually I take some time and sit on my stool. It's a good good time to practice mindfulness meditation and to take some deep breaths, purse-slip pur breathing, and get your breath back. Get your breath caught up. Don't um, just think, okay, I got, I, I'm out of the shower now. Now I can start walking around because you can't. When you come out of the, the shower, you're often short of breath. So take your time, sit on a stool, regain your breath, get it all back again. Then you can start to look at other uh, things like brushing your teeth, drying your hair, whatever has to be done. What I usually do is I catch my breath and I go and sit in front of the TV or I lay in bed for about 20 minutes, wait until everything is back to normal. Then I go and uh, I pace myself, I get myself dressed, I do my nails on my feet, I check all my feet, make sure that everything's good. And um, it makes it a little bit longer to have a shower. So usually when I'm thinking about having a shower, I'm putting aside about an hour to an hour and a half. 
So for able-bodied people, they'd go an hour or an hour and a half. How can you possibly do that? Well, guess what? Be disabled and then you'll find out. So an hour or an hour and a half to have my shower. Um, on my Pinterest, oh, it's a good idea. You can take all that shower stuff, all that um, uh, toothbrush and toothpaste and all of that right into the shower. So that could be in your shower caddy, right? And uh, do it right in, in there. And then you don't have to worry about um, doing any of that stuff when you get out and you're still sitting on your seat, right? Yeah, Jeff, you know what I do too? I have to get the water off of my face. I got something about having water on my face. I can't stand it. That's why I can't stand the um, the shower head if it's not a handheld one. I can't stand the water on my face. It just drives me crazy. So the first thing I have to do is get, get the oxygen off, walk, dry my face all up. And so a microfiber towel is a really good one, you know, because it soaks it all up. Um, terry towel is good too. If you get a terry towel cloth, right? I have my, my bathroom is just full of... Um, hand towels. I use a lot of hand towels. Okay, so um, if you find it hard to shower, you can skip a day, right? We're not young and virile like we used to be. We don't have to shower every day, I don't think. I, I um, was watching, I don't know, does anybody watch Murdoch Mysteries? Excellent, excellent show. It's a Canadian show, so I don't know if everybody gets it or not, but we certainly do in Canada. And uh, uh, it takes place in the uh, 1890s to about 1930, right? And uh, they talk about, you know, the monthly shower. And I, I often think about how bad we're going to smell after the, uh, when we wait a month in between showering. But hey, if they did it then, we can do it now. If you're really feeling bad, don't feel bad about not having a shower. You can always have the PTA shower, you know, um, just in a wash basin. And, uh, oh, Carol, do you watch it? Don't you just love it? I just love Murdoch Mysteries. Every day at 5 o'clock, everything has to stop in my house, right? Because Murdoch's on. And I've seen all those shows, right? Because I watch it all the time. So on my uh, Pinterest board, I have some excellent shower meditation. So if you think about mindfulness and meditation and you're thinking about, you know, how hard it is to shower. Um, it's true, Wendy, I believe you. Uh, my nephew, uh, years and years ago, had a skin rashes. He'd always break, be breaking out in skin rashes. And the doctor told her, don't shower him every day. And when you do shower him, he doesn't need... Uh, uh, soaps and, and products and stuff, right? Like, watch the products that you're using. Yeah, I think I think most of us would die if we needed to shower every day because that'd be all we'd get done, right? We wouldn't get anything else done all day. Um, but watch the products that you're using. That's what I was saying about having uh, scents and stuff in your um, uh, in your bath. Watch the showers that you're using because um, some of them can be actually you know, pretty bad. And we don't want to uh, eliminate all the oils on our skins because what happens then? Um, what happens then is that uh, uh, we start to become, become itchy and that leads to scratching and that leads to um, having some sores and stuff and we don't need to go there. Now, has anybody ever tried dry shampoo? Dry shampoo. So, when I was in the hospital, I was in ICU for a month. And I in ICU, they don't really care too much about personal hygiene. Has anybody ever noticed that before? Nobody comes and says, hey, you should brush your teeth. You have to ask them. Nobody comes and says, that nurse doesn't ever bath you anymore. And my hair was an absolute mess. Like after three days, like I have to wash my hair almost every second or third day because it's very fine. So I didn't know at the time about dry shampoos. But listen, if you're having a tough day, a dry shampoo is excellent. And they tell me that it's really, really good. I still haven't tried it yet, but I am thinking about it. And I'm thinking about getting some... Good idea, Carol. Good idea. And all the fairs and the uh, places that are selling that stuff is all open now, but something unscented is really, really good. And if it agrees with you, it agrees with you. 
I have a really hard time in my vaginal area. Um, I can't use a lot of uh, high scented soaps and stuff like that. I get really bad rashes down there. But anyways, that's sorry for another day. Uh, dry shampoo. So something to consider to have on hand when you can't shower is a dry shampoo and um, just having a sink wash. Like, is there anything wrong with that? Where are we going? Like, seriously. So there was one, uh, Wendy, if you've tried it. So uh, if there was one where you put it on your hair and then you put this cap on and then you left it on all night and when you wake up in the morning, you just brush it out and it's all like pretty good, pretty good, right? Yeah, it's a good idea, Jeff. We got our Google Minis for Christmas, right? I told everybody, I talked about this before, about my Google Minis. We've got music going in every room of the house and I absolutely love it. And the best part of it is we're singing our little hearts out, which is really, really good for your COPD. Um, but the best part, no TV. We had my grandson for two weeks and absolutely no TV. It was fabulous, right? So I really, really like it. I really like to focus on the music and the singing. And, um, you know, it brings back a few memories. It's like uh, the smell of bacon and eggs reminds you of Sunday morning, right? Well, the music really uh, triggers some memories for me, too. And some of them are good ones. So bonus. Um, okay, so any other trips, tips and tricks for uh, showering? Does anybody else have we got it covered now? Is everybody good with the showering stuff? And I think that the person who requested this is in here, but I'm sure that she's going to be watching it in the uh, replays. So I had a um, magazine article done for me, and I know that uh, Guidepost put my name on the article, uh, but they really asked the questions and put it together for me, and they, they gave me credit for it, which was wonderful. So Guidepost magazine, the April edition, has my story in it. Um, I um, promoted it actually before I got my before I got the electronic link for it. So if anybody's interested in reading that article, it's now uh, at Catch Your Breath sixty, and the article is called In the Moment. And I really appreciate the fact that everybody was um, so excited for me about having a, an article done. It was a great, great um, uh, lift for me over the weekend, right? And uh, my daughter-in-law was the one who actually um, put it online and started promoting it because it was in the April edition, but I didn't really think too much about it. So um, uh, so baby powder, uh, Joy, you've got to be careful about baby powder because you can't, if you start to ingest that talc, um, the portion that's in the powder, the, what makes it is uh, talc. And uh, you've got to be careful about ingesting that. It's really, really not good for you. So I can't really, I can't really promote baby powder. Um, I've had some really hard, uh, really big issues with baby powder in the last couple of years. So be careful about that. If it works for you, it's great. Um, but I can't promote it because I think the, the talc is a little hard on our lungs. Uh, the other thing with baby powder is that... Um, uh, there's some cancer causing um, issues with it if you're using it in your vaginal area. Sorry, Jeff. I know you don't have a vaginal area and it probably doesn't affect you. But um, women are not supposed to be using it in their vaginal area. So just saying about the baby powder, right? Um, I don't know what the powdered perf uh, shampoo is like. I've, like I said, I've never tried it. Windy has. I don't know if it's kind of a powdery substance. I, I would imagine that it probably is. But Anyways, so um, I appreciate everybody who commented on my um, on my uh, article over the weekend, and I apologize for you for those of you who didn't see the article, but it is up now, uh, and it's called "In the Moment." So um, yes, it's uh, like a powder, right? Like it's dry, like a, a talc. So Wendy, what do you think about the difference between baby powder and this uh, dry shampoo? I know we used to use baby powder as a dry shampoo um, when I was much younger um, and it usually came on hangover days. I didn't drink that much but when I did I usually had a hangover the next day because I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to drinking and so uh, I put some baby powder in my hair and away I'd go. 
So uh, I don't know if it's uh, if it's okay or not. But if if it works for you, it's great. I, I love it if it works for you. So follow me, please. I am on Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and my blog is at Catch Your Breath Sixty. Don't forget my Facebook page. Um, we have about four hundred and twenty followers now, and I'm really, really. Uh, <laughs> I know Sandra. I'm really, really happy about that. I'm, I'm actually thrilled with that. My contest is still open. Please do sign up at catchyourbreath60.com. It's the only way that I can um, get your name to uh, be in the in the draw for my my um, contest, and it is coming up. Remember that we have an artist who is doing. Um, uh, we have an artist who is doing a custom uh, picture for us uh, for Catch Your Breath 60 for the draw. Uh, we have two cups that are coming up, two Catch Your Breath 60 cups, very much like these. In fact, they are exactly like these, except this one is mine. Um, we have some jewelry there uh, on the contest, and we also have a planner and a pen. So... Make sure that if you want to be included in that, and that's going to be um, not next week, but the week after, we're going to start drawing for them, right? So make sure that you sign up at Catch Your Breath 60. Um, you just have to sign up for the contest. And if you don't want my blogs after that, you can definitely unsubscribe. Okay, so um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Catch Your Breath 60 blog. Follow me. I really appreciate everybody joining us today, and I love to hear the conversations that are going off um, where everybody's having some side conversations here, and so um, I'm really enjoying that. If you have any um, requests for uh, what you'd like to talk about next week, let us know, and uh, we can get set up for that. Thank you for today. I appreciate it. This is Barbara Moore signing off for Catch Your Breath 60.